Dan Buckle, thank you very much for making a bit of time to chat and I uh, hope you are enjoying the, the event this afternoon. Yep, loving it. People are really happy. So, uh, so Dan, uh, in your uh, roles in the wine industry in, in the past, I'm sure you've been involved with the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival. What are some of the events that you've uh, been involved with in the past or some of the events you've attended uh, that have been highlights in the past 25 years? Well, this is certainly one of them and I really like the idea of it. Um, I've been to many different types of tastings over the years and I think Melbourne Food and Wine Festival is a, a really great thing that we host here. It gives producers, big and small, a real chance to show off their stuff and for me personally it's really great to see how engaged people are. Um, they come along to these events and tastings and they're really curious and really loving it. So. So as far as the Makers and Muses concept, um, and, and you know, you've been involved with uh, different producers uh, here, I believe, um, and, and, and no doubt you know, you've had contact with other producers, uh, what, what do you feel is the, the, you know, the real meaning of Makers and Muses and, and the benefit of um, that, you know, the close nature of the, the, uh, the Victorian wine industry in particular? I think it gives... Um the consumers and the people who come to this sort of event an understanding of what a great network and what a great collaborative spirit there exists between winemakers. Um, up there are people here like Ian Riggs who's been a mentor to me over the years. Um, I can sort of see the, the different lines of connection between the wines and the makers and uh, the different places they've worked and their influences. So I think to, to bring that into the the public mind is a really great thing because the depth of knowledge and experience and the different sets of ideas um, get really highlighted in a tasting like this. So um, how many vintages is this at Chandon um, for 2017? This is my sixth vintage at Chandon. How's the 2017 vintage been in compared to um, the, the past six, six, six years or so? Cool, wonderfully cool, very high acidity. Um, it's been a long vintage, so we're all a bit tired and grumpy, but uh, overall I think the quality is extraordinary. Um, the, the acidity and finesse in, in the wines we're making right now is really exciting. Um, reminds me of 2002. Yeah, that, I've, I have heard people compare that. And, uh, you know, when I worked at Chandon, I was lucky enough to... to, to there were still a couple of 2002 wines and they, they still... Um, you know, I, I still I still carry them with me. But just the, the the elegance, the depth of those wines. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of the 2017 sparkling wines. But as far as still wines, how have they been? Um, we haven't seen a lot of Shiraz this year, but with the Pinots that I'm making, they're, they're looking pretty good. It's been a waiting game, um, and sort of have to hold fire a little bit and impatient at times. But just waiting for the tannin maturity. Um, which we're seeing at low sugars, so that's kind of good. And the wines that I've pressed so far look optimistically complex and with quite nice structure, so I think the, the wines will be good. I, I think still wine Chardonnay that I've seen from the Upper Yarra and from Mornington this year look to be outstanding uh, in terms of character and, and funkiness as well as acidity, um, so that's quite exciting. And of course, um, you know, the people who are representing different wine um, today, you know, there's a huge diversity uh, as far as you know, the, the amount of time the wine producer's been around uh, in terms of you know, the, the, the age differential. Um, who are some of the people that you've uh, been looking forward to catching up with, you know, particularly because you've been, your head's been buried in, in vintage um, and you know, some of the wines you might have been looking forward to tasting and, and reconnecting with? It's always interesting to taste the broken wood stuff that comes out of Beechworth. I think they're, um, we don't see a lot of that in Victoria, but the wines are ter terrific. Um, the Shaw and Smith wines, I've been a long admirer and I think a real benchmark for Adelaide Hills. Um, nice to see Ben Haynes down from Lange. I haven't had a chance to get over there, but I'm looking forward to tasting what he's pouring right now. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of really exciting wines. Bill Danny right next to us here, his wines are always awesome. It's a, always a treat to get a look at that. So I don't know that there's anything I wouldn't enjoy tasting. <laughs> this Grenache from Yolumba here has been really exciting. They've got this uh, light and fruity style Grenache that I think is just a wonderful drink. So. Fantastic. Well, I won't hold you up, you know, hopefully you get an opportunity to, to pop over and taste a few more wines. But uh, look, I really appreciate you making a bit of time and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Cool. Thanks, Jane.